Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're back again with another video of 6.4. This time we're going to be discussing all about uh, 6.43 and that is a chapter with Darkhawk boss. So Darkhawk boss is a really tricky boss with very few great counters and we're gonna get him at the end of the video. But first things first, we're gonna go through each lane and we're just gonna go in the order of each lane. So we're gonna go to the first lane here, which uh, basically is a true strike and aggression cruelty. Now starting this quest, you definitely do need to be careful because each encounter has some special uh, individual nodes as well. So you need to read up on those. For most part, they are relatively harmless but uh, you never know, uh, you better come in prepared. And this first lane uh, is relatively easy. So the uh, global nodes on the lane basically are true strike and aggression cruelty. So that's effectively nothing, so it's a bear and node. Only thing to note about this lane in particular is the fact that there is this final Annihilus boss with a true strike active and his added nodes is no retreat and that is always fun time, no retreat and Nihilus. Uh, so you do need to come in prepared for this guy. I personally believe use Dr. Doom or Ghost and just tank the level threes. I don't remember exactly. It didn't seem to have too big of an issue with this guy, but definitely be prepared for him. Other than that, this initial lane is relatively easy. Quickly, I uh, forgot to mention the fact that as all the other quests, this uh, quest has six lanes and each lane has a mini boss right at the very end of it so always check out the nodes on the mini bosses now the second lane is going to be uh power gain and special bias now special bias is actually very uh tricky node because it says this defender is more likely to activate special three first and then special attack two and then special attack one now what's wrong about it is it effectively doesn't work effectively it works more much more like all or nothing node uh, when it says more likely, <laughs> I tried to bait out uh, any special attack from these guys prior to reaching level 3 and it didn't work. And obviously combined with 100% power gain, they reached that level 3 relatively quickly. So for this node, you effectively have to treat it as an all or nothing node. Uh, so bring your quakes, bring your magics, bring your Dr. Dooms, bring any other form of power control you might have. I personally... Uh, used guillotine 2099 for a lot of these fights because she can pack a punch and with her pre-fight ability you can basically make sure opponents never reach three bars of power or rather they reach three bars of power but whenever you finish a combo with medium they will just lose a tiny bit of power and that will leave them at two plus bars and they never use it uh, so whichever way you choose to tackle these lanes obviously is up to you as i mentioned before power control is heavily encouraged you can also just go for ghost and hood synergy and tank all of the level threes that works perfectly fine as well and the final boss here just to note uh, is going to be night rusher and he has unblockable finale which uh, makes things a bit difficult to end, but it's not the worst kind of like a mini boss encounter so overall it's not too tricky of a lane Lane 3 is actually quite an interesting one and uh, it has clap back and feet of power. Now clap, clap back is always a really interesting lane and I like those largely because how well Human Torch can cheese all of this stuff because every time you place an incinerate on opponent it's going to try and place an incinerate back on you. That means small the charge for Human Torch and he's going to be doing some incredible damage extremely quickly. So yeah, Human Torch is one of the MVPs here. Also, uh, I believe that uh, so is Sunspot. Sunspot should be working extremely well. But other than that, you can just avoid all of these damage or time debuffs and you don't have anything to worry about really either. So it's entirely up to you who you use or how you play. Know that there's Vision Arcus, which is a fairly tricky defender. And the final mini there is Dormammu with footloose nodes and split atom so you want the science champion and ideally you want to somehow deal with the footloose so captain america infinity war would probably work extremely well and yeah that's our she hawk she hawk would be a really good option as well i think i used quake for this or human torch one or the other but uh, either way it's uh, not overly tricky fight if you come prepared if you have decent champions decent counters so do keep that in mind and uh, yeah, perhaps you can have a bit of fun on clapback. 
now that means we can move on lane number four and lane number four is a bit trickier because lane number four is that stunning reflection node which is a new node we see it for the first time and basically what it does is every time you stun the opponent you get stunned instead for three seconds and then the shield goes on cooldown or uh, you can uh, inflict poison or incinerate an opponent and uh, then the shield will go on cooldown as well for eight seconds so champions who have easy access to poison and or incinerate and i know for a fact that there aren't too many champions that are reliably and easily poison opponents so it's likely going to be the incinerate champions such as night rusher such as human torch such as sunspot once again uh, that can disable this stunning reflection but always you can simply choose to face these guys as if they were stun immune then you have nothing to worry about or you can run ghost because ghost obviously doesn't really require to parry the opponents uh, so there are several ways how you can approach this node that's why i don't really mind it in particular as i mentioned before you can choose to work within the com com confines of the node and uh, just keep opponents incinerated regularly to make sure that uh, that uh, stun shield goes on the cooldown consistently you can i don't know choose to run nick fury and he's stun immune in his second phase emma frost is stun immune in diamond form so whenever she's in diamond form you can parry them safely uh, mordo is probably a decent option <laughs> as well if you have stacked mordo for whatever reason because then you can just reply those stuns or you can just choose to play around it without uh, stunning the opponent at all altogether when it comes to encounters on this lane then nothing like overly too difficult there is this nebula uh, as a mini boss and nebula also has all or nothing and increased power gain so be ready for that some sort of form of power control once again would be heavily encouraged now i tried quake obviously quake does not work on this lane <laughs> can i stress this enough quake does not work here because i thought you know with concussion and 100 percent reduced ability accuracy nope does not help uh just a quick note there and now we have two lanes left and the lanes that we have left are uh first and foremost kinetic transference and poison and this is actually a really straightforward lane the opponents on there are tricky and yeah just bring in ghost or bring in poison immune champions and you're gonna be perfectly fine now every single fight on this lane has poison so be prepared for that but uh, other than that there is nothing really to worry about except for this cable and this is a really annoying cable because he has kinetic transference all of his special attacks are unblockable he's gonna be aggressive and he has encroaching stun so again this cable can be a fairly tricky if you do not have a solid game plan for him again i keep mentioning the same names ghost is obviously a very solid option because you can just phase through the special attacks and encroaching stun you need to still time that one out quite well uh, but yeah this cable is definitely an annoying mini boss uh, so uh, pick your weapons choose your uh, options and go and prepared that this cable is going to be quite a bit annoying uh, probably the best bit is to bring in some form of power control where you can spam special attacks and prevent him from activating his special attacks uh, all that being said and done we are left with our last lane and last lane is what was it stun immunity and spite now uh it's a combo as old as time and as effective as it is uh it's not filled with the most tricky encounters if you look at the fights here spider gwen black widow claire wayne heimdall so ragnarok and then it's ant-man miss marvel beast uh mysterio now again uh this quest quite heavily quite often requires you to have some sort of power control champion and as always when you're dealing with spite uh it is helpful that you do have some power control options or you can just uh, try and ride it out and be very effective betting out opponent special attacks uh, my personal tip for this lane for some trickier fights is that quake still works even though opponents are stun immune what you need to do is you just heavy and block up until the time opponents get the first concussion on and once they have concussion on you are free to dex and get the dexterity debuff on yourself and spite will not trigger so, and then you can just fully heavy evade everything 
uh, that the opponent throw at you and Quake can be used as normal. Obviously, again, the same old strategy with Ghost and Hood synergy, just tank them or just bring in champions with no buffs and relatively decent power control. There is this Mysterio that is definitely going to be annoying because uh, he has a toxic behavior node because uh, it will automatically convert all of those three chemical gas debuff thingies into poison. Uh, that's the node that we see quite typically in boss nodes for Mysterio. And obviously he has stun immunity and spite and Mysterio is annoying in itself. Uh, so that is a relatively tricky encounter for sure. Again, go unprepared. And then Red Hulk with immune to bleed, aggressive and aggression fury is nothing too complicated there to deal with. Uh, but yeah, Spite and Stun Immunity. It uh, sounds worse than it was, because really it isn't that tricky of a fight, so long as you bring in some power control options. And the boss fight. The boss fight is Darkhawk, and Darkhawk is argu arguably probably the trickiest boss out of all your regular bosses in 6.4, uh, just because of uh, the block damage involved typically, and kind of like finicky gameplay and very limited amount of great counters. So first and foremost, Cannot stress this enough, uh, if you quake, if you are a quake player, you have absolutely nothing to worry about, there's absolutely nothing preventing you from quaking this Dark Hawk down, very easy one shot, nothing to worry about, he is going to be unblockable for first 30 seconds I believe of the fight, but after that it's just a regular Dark Hawk with absolutely no problems uh, for quake. Uh, the second great option, as far as I have been led to believe, obviously is going to be Human Torch, because Darkhawk will spam his level once uh, due to the power efficiency node, and Human Torch will stack a load of smolders, and in this case the fight you want to go is you do not want to keep kind of like knocking him down, what you want to do is just block the level ones, punish them, block the level ones and be in kind of like high stakes match there. Now be careful of the lion card node because if you do actually reverse his heal enough you will start degening due to it so always keep a close look on your insane rates. Ideally you want to go in with a pre-fight ability because uh, then uh, you can manage it, the fight much easier basically is what I'm saying. And then obviously your uh, easy kind of like uh, be done methods with Corvus or Ghost. I uh, know Corvus can solo this fight as well if he's stacked up or Ghost probably can solo this fight as well. Just take some level 1s in a block, push opponents level 2, wait it out, be careful about it. If you have to, uh, tank a level 3 with Ghost uh, if you're trying to avoid uh, get him getting to his uh, null mode, which is the one that misses. And yeah, Chorus as well, you can just play relatively carefully, bait out the level 1, take the hits and block, don't knock him down outside of like a massive special attack, and just try and deal with the guy that way. So far, uh, those are the most popular counters that I've heard of, Ghost, uh, Aegon, to do, yeah, Aegon should work relatively well as well. So Ghost, Aegon, uh, Quake and Human Torch, and uh, another one obviously would be Medusa, now he has the node that prevents his ability accuracy to be reduced, force of will. However, armor shatter does not only reduce opponent's ability accuracy, it also prevents them gain from gaining any power. So that would still make the fight a lot easier than it normally would be. And you would have a lot less special attacks to bait and you would have a lot less block damage to take. So I definitely suspect that Medusa is still a great option and probably Vision Arcus as well in this situation. Other than that, it's going to be just one of those bosses that takes uh, revives, a bit of frustration, <laughs> maybe a team revive to get through, because there really are not that many great counters, and even if you have a decent counter, it is typically not a straightforward fight, pretty much, unless you're like, using Quake. And uh, yeah, that pretty much is it for our six point. Uh, Four, three. Uh, the boss is annoying, the lanes themselves are much less so, because uh, yeah, all of them have clear kind of objectives and you have clear ways to play around it or cheese it, and there was no absolute kind of like nightmare encounters, uh, should I say. 
and that will be it for today's video so i hope uh this kind of like i uh, brought a bit of more light to uh, 6.43 quest and i hope this helps you out as you're going to explore the quest now if you do think so that this will help you then definitely do not hesitate to hit that like button hit that sub button uh, to check out the rest of the videos stay notified and share with your alliance and friends as they are probably planning to explore 6.4 at some point in the future as well all of that being said i hope you guys have a fantastic day and i'm gonna catch you guys soon see ya